This is Entrepreneurs Get Visible, the podcast for people who want more impact, influence, and income. I'm Anna Parker Naples, and I'll be sharing with you proven methods from leading entrepreneurs that help you get visible as an authority in your field. Because anything's possible when you get visible. There's no getting away from it. Branding and photography make a massive difference to how you are perceived by other people. Social media is a very visual thing as a visual beast, particularly if you're on Instagram and actually if you're on LinkedIn and Facebook. So the reason that I think you need to have some great images is because Facebook algorithms are particularly skewed, and LinkedIn, but Facebook particularly are skewed to favour images of people. So you're going to get greater reach on a post that has an image versus one that doesn't. You're going to get greater reach and engagement on a post that has a person in it than one that doesn't. And we know our brains recognise a stock image. You are going to get greater traction, greater engagement, greater reach on posts that have a photograph of you in it. And even more so if that photograph contains your face and that we can actually see you and feel like we know you. As human beings, we are massively drawn to faces. It is one of the first things as a human that we experience seeing the face of our mother. We want that connection and that is how we build connection and build what we feel as rapport. So that's what you want to be putting out on your social media if you have a hope in hell of your posts being seen by the masses. So I know that there is an element of real fear about putting your face out there more and more. And I really resonate with that. In fact, in my book, which is going to be out shortly, or maybe by the time you're listening to this, it's already out. I talk a lot about how I was attacked as a teenager and that a lot of my language actually before I discovered mindset and NLP tools would really be about my face being out there that I'd be attacked. I'd feel like my eye was being attacked if my face was being seen by people. And I understand that it can be really scary to show some of yourself on camera, but having great photography accompanied by great branding is just such an important part of growing your business and growing your personal brand. So even if you're right at the start of your business, I would highly recommend that you put as many pennies as you can towards getting some good photography. And that doesn't have to cost a bomb. There are photographers who charge thousands of pounds for a day's branding shoot. But there are also photographers who are skilled, who might charge you by the hour, maybe a couple of hundred pounds, maybe even a little bit less because they're wanting to build their portfolio. And if you're going to go with someone who is perhaps less experienced or is a little bit cheaper in the market, you want to make sure that you've done your research before you turn up to the session and maybe have a conversation with them before the session about exactly what you're hoping to get from it. So I think you want to have photographs that are not just you and your corporate headshot, which is important. It is important to have a decent, professionally taken photograph of you that is your kind of main image. But you also want to have some shots of you moving, smiling, working in different locations, perhaps with different backgrounds. Because once you have a good stock of photographs, you are going to be able to use them again and again and again for brand recognition all over your social media. Personally, I have had many, many photo shoots over the years, probably no surprise given that my background was as an actor. But having the ones that are usable for your business and what you're intending to put out there makes a massive difference. I think that it's much more valuable to put out photographs of yourself than it is to be putting out stock images. And definitely it's more valuable to have photographs of yourself than to be really reverting back to putting out lots of quote memes out there again and again. It's memorable. It's you. People are going to be drawn much more to reading the text that accompanies the post if it's got an image that is compelling for them to look at. So before that branding shoot, you need to think about, right, who's it for? Who am I appealing to? How do I want to niche? How do I want to stand out? What colours do I want people to remember? And those things might well translate into what you would decide to wear, the props that you might have around you quite common things in the entrepreneur space is to have pictures with your laptop, with your iPad, with your phone, with your pen, with your notebook. Think about what things you might want to bring into that photo shoot that would help you. It's quite good to have different locations so that it's not all in your office, not all in your house, not all in a photo studio. 
got quite good to have some natural light ones where you're outside somewhere, you're using different backgrounds. We get a bit bored if we see the same photo over and over again. So there is that element of, yes, you want brand recognition, but you also want to interest people and um, get their attention. So have a variety of different backgrounds, different buildings, different brickwork just different things that you can have. Some maybe things where there's a room in the background, maybe you're in a cafe or a restaurant, or maybe it's your house and there's something in the background. A good photographer should have an eye for these things anyway. But it's worth going and doing a bit of online stalking for the people that you are drawn to follow so that when you approach a photographer, you can say, well, I like this image and I like this person and I like this about what they're doing. A great way to do this, even before you approach a photographer, is to keep a Pinterest board, a set of pins that you have have found of images, and you can throw them all together so that when you have an initial conversation with a photographer to potentially get their quote or find out how they work, they have got a very visual tool as well for the kind of things that you're looking for. I like to have several photographs that are taken that are not just me, not just me in the frame, but there is quite a lot of space to the side, to either side of me, because that gives me options for creating kind of banner images that maybe I would use as a Facebook header or a LinkedIn header that I could maybe use uh, as a promotional piece, maybe put some text to the side of me in that space somewhere so that I can get really creative or my team can get creative on Canva or PicMonkey or Photoshop or whatever to create some really valuable brand imagery that's not just photographs of me that has a further use to it. So yeah, you need to be thinking, one, making sure that the lighting is going to be great, that the photographer is going to have that taken care of. I strongly recommend that you fork out for this. You don't just get your friend or your mum to take some pictures. There will be a different energy transmuted through the camera if you know that that you've got a professional doing it and you're valuing the photography that you're having created, that they're using a great camera, which if you're employing someone, they absolutely should be doing that, that you've got a variety of locations and backgrounds for pattern interrupt, that you've thought about how you're going to use these images afterwards. So watch what other people are doing on Instagram or Facebook. Do this research, do this online stalking, if you like. And key thing really is if you're feeling really nervous and feeling like you can't even look at the camera, I'd do some mindset work. I'd speak to someone, an NLP practitioner, or I'd do some hypnosis to really move these fears you have about being seen, because that's what those fears come down to. And know that actually once you've got these images, they are going to be so valuable to you potentially for years to come. Now, I tend to refresh my images maybe every six to 12 months as my brand evolves, as I evolve, as I want to get a new message out there, perhaps. But that doesn't mean that the photos I've had done before become obsolete. It might be that they become integrated into my new messaging. It might be that some don't feel like me, don't feel current anymore. But having a good stock of photographs and hundreds of them over time is really, really valuable to you. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneurs Get Visible. To get your free checklist on how to raise your profile and to find out about our community, go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get visible.